I'd like to introduce a topic which I'm hoping will be the nut we crack in 2011. You've shown through your core business the value of connecting anyone to anyone else. Ten years ago in developing countries, when mobile was first starting to roll out, I can imagine plenty of conversations at that time, poor people uh, uh, in rural villages, why would they want the mobile phone? Who will they talk to? They don't have any money. They don't, they, everybody lives in their, in their small village. And yet you gave them the capability to talk, and talk they did. And that's because no one lives in an island. Everyone is, is connected with everybody else through a patchwork of networks, whether they're families, friends, social, or business. And you've made that possible with voice. So those networks, again, family, friends, business, once they're done talking to each other, what's the second thing that characterizes human relationships? Passing value to each other. First talk, then pass value. That's why mobile money will be as powerful as mobile, as mobile voice has been. Perhaps not the same margin, so, but uh, that's the bad news, but just as powerful. People need to exchange value to each other. And that's the world that this makes possible. Um, at the Gates Foundation, just very briefly, the reason why we are backing this initiative is because we want to see a world where every person has access to what I call connected savings. We believe people need safe places to save, and those saving uh, uh, accounts are going to be much more useful to people if they're connected to everyone else so they can use that, that's those, that money saved immediately to make payments, to help families in need, or to support their business. It's also more useful if that, if that savings account is connected to the retail shops near where I live and work, because that's where I'm going to be cashing in and cashing out. So it's this notion of connection, which is the essence of development. We develop uh, uh, countries, we develop communities by connecting them to roads so they can take their, their goods to market, to communication networks so that they can, that they can be expanding their, their, their business and family uh, relationships. Uh, and that's what the next frontier is, connecting people to payments networks. That's what you're going to make possible. So it's all about connections. So with that, let me, let's just look at what is the ecosystem that you're trying to build. It's just a, an ecosystem of customers. You only have customers to worry about. So who are they? First, there's a whole bunch of people which you typically call customers. Let's just call end users. Just people who are connected, and between them, they do P2P. The stunning thing, that the statistic I like quoting about, and I'm sorry, my only reference to Kenya here. No, actually, I have another one later on. Um, uh, about Kenya is that after two and a half years, people in Kenya using M-Pesa did more transactions than Western Union did globally. I mean, how much more powerful can this be? Just take the Western Union thing, bring it into people's daily lives, and that's what you're making possible. So P2P, power to the people. The second community of customers, and I'm using that term very deliberately, are what you guys call agents. I don't call them agents. They're customers. They're super users. They're value-added resellers who are going to make some money from the fact that they have an account into your, in your platform. That's what they do. They're a value-added reseller. They're adding value to your end users by giving them the possibility of matching a P2P transfer with a cash transfer the other way. These are customers. These are super users. These are value-added resellers. These are not agents. These are not an extension of your distribution. That's a key point I'd like to make. This is not distribution. Distribution sales channel is one where the customer needs to part money to give you more money. That's not what these guys do. When I go to the agent to a cash in or a cash out, I'm just exchanging two forms of money that are mine. I'm not giving you new money to buy new airtime or stuff like that. So the, uh, the, the cash business is not a, a sales uh, channel. It's purely a service channel, which, which your customers are, 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 are doing for you, uh, the customers that, that we call agents or, or we, the term that we prefer is cash merchant. It's a crucial element of your customer base. They're just customers like anyone else. What you offer for this customer set is, in addition to the basic P2P, which is what makes cash in, cash out possible, you're also offering them a billing capability, which is the commission that you pay for them, just like you do for many people with, uh, with, your, uh, with your billing platform for developers, you know, your uh, uh, premium SMS and all that kind of stuff. You're providing a way for these guys to make money and to monetize their account with you, their customers. The third category of customers 
And by the way, the circle is proportionate to number of players, not uh, volume of transactions, but number of players. So, that, so the, 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 with the, those end users interact with the customers in P2 cash and cash to P transactions. The third, I would call all the bulk users or corporate users, if, if you like. These are um, bill payment. These are employers who want to distribute salaries. These are financial intermediaries who want to use your platforms uh, as, a, as, a, as a great transaction uh, acquisition uh, uh, network. Very valuable users for you, or customers. And the fourth, and, I, and this is probably more looking into the future, are the merchants. Not the cash merchants, but the people who just want to use your form of payment for customers to pay their goods. That is the future. This side is not the future. These guys here, the cash merchants, it's just a necessary, uh, uh, necessary cost until customers can use their money directly to pay for goods at the, at the, at the merchants. So that's where you want to go. This is, this is where you need to start. This is the ecosystem you need to build. The question is, can you do it alone? Should you be doing it alone? And what I, what I really want to convince you is the answer is yes, absolutely. And this is not at all at odds with the notion of churn reduction, which is uh, a key business driver. Let me convince you of that. Let me take a customer, uh, let me take a country, this is just picked, well, not entirely at random, but I don't, I don't want to pick on any particular country, I just happened to be in Tanzania recently, which has the characteristic of a customer, uh, a country where the mobile operators are really committed. Four mobile operators, all, all of them have launched, launched mobile money. They're all past this phase of thinking, oh, this is going to be easy. They understand the realities now. So this is how the market is developing. Four, uh, four mobile operators, and these are, this is a piece of the market that each is going to take because my customers can transact with my customers, your customers with yours, and they're just, they're just going up and down the diagonal of that market. So the question is, what happens everywhere else? Is it white space? Is that just a market that is not being harnessed? Not at all. It is being harnessed because if you don't provide an interconnection, customers will take it into their own hands. How? Multiple SIM cards. That's the reality. Um, if, if, I'm, if, if I'm with, uh, with Vodafone and Pesa, I want to send money to a uh, Zap customer. I'm going to get myself a Zap, uh, 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 an Airtel, Airtel SIM. So that is the worst form of interconnection for you because that's how you're not going to get churn reduction. You're going to ch get churn reduction if customers only have one SIM. Whether it's yours or someone else's, it doesn't really matter. Uh, because if you don't provide that, then they'll have all four. And that's the worst situation for the customer and for you. So that is the enemy. The enemy is the customers having four SIM cards. What you want is with one SIM card, I can send money to anyone. Now let me tell you, so that's in terms of the, the, that, that big P2P circle, the first circle that I put in. If you really want the churn to kick in, you need to interconnect. The, the case of MTN Uganda is perhaps uh, a, a bit uh, temporarily by not interconnecting, you might have a churn reduction because the competitors are really not so much up to speed, but they will. You know, okay, you may have a six-month advantage, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, relative to the tidal wave that mobile money will be, that's going to be anecdotal when we look at, it, look at this two or three years from now. Now let's look at the, at the merchant side. I've talked so far about interconnecting platforms, which requires a little bit of switching capability in the back end and some settlement, clearing and settlement in the back end as well for money to compensate things. Now let's take it one step further. How about sharing those uh, uh, cash merchants? Do you really, really, really want to differentiate in the part of the service that is least in your DNA, which is the least scalable part of the business, which is the cash in, cash out? Don't, don't for a minute think that this is like, like, like airtime distribution. You, because you're probably thinking, well, if I, if I, if I uh, don't share my airtime distribution, why would I share the cash merchants? Well, because, again, airtime distribution is a sales channel. You're trying to convince customers to part with new money. So that needs heavy branding. That needs a whole set of characteristics because you need to convince customers to part the money and give it to you. The cash in, for the cash in, cash out, it's customers exchanging two forms of money. This cash merchant is no, no different to in my shop. I put a little, a little uh, device, a little machine on the wall. You put in a, a, a bill and out come coins. I'm sure you've seen these uh, coin dispenser machines. It's exchanging two forms of cash, two forms of money that are mine. When I put in the bill, the bill is mine. When the, cash, uh, when the coins come out, the coins are mine. And somehow in the, middle, in the middle, there's a transformation of paper to metal. Well, you with these cash merchants, the conversion is paper to electrons. 
It's the same business. It's not a sexy, uh, it's not a sexy business con converting uh, bills into pa in, in, uh, paper into coins. Um, so sharing cash merchants, why should you do this? Um, well, first, because, Opa. Well, first, because this is ridiculous for the store. Okay, this is um, in Brazil, where you know this shop has all these different point-of-sale devices. Okay, in the mobile money world, there's a bit less of a problem because these devices no longer call for $100; they cost $40, but still, it looks silly for the for for for, for the store. Um, the second important reason is not only the cost of all this equipment, which looks silly, and training, and so on is what's behind all these devices, which is a pot of money in, sitting in an account. You really think that the, the, the store wants to have five different um, uh, liquidity pots, one cash and, one for, and four wallets, so that any customer can deal with me? That's the other thing that happens when you don't share agents. You end up sharing them in the, in the silliest way. So this is a picture of Tanzania. Um, yeah, everybody thinks they have their own agents. Oh, uh, sharing agents, I will never do that. Except look at, look at that. I mean, Vodafone and Pesa, uh, Tigo Pesa, Wakala, the, the stores will be shared. The only question is, do you do it deliberately or do you do it uh, in a silly way? That's the only difference. And by silly, I mean where we're all putting kit, where we are fragmenting the liquidity of the store because, because it's, too, it's bad enough asking them to have two pots of, of liquidity. Now they need five. And where the branding completely disappears. Because that is what happens when you have two. By the time the third guy comes, the store is not going to be putting three more signs up. What the store is going to do is take them all down. The first one gets a big poster. The second one gets a, a small poster. The third one not only does, gets no poster, but the other posters come down. The store says, hey, this is crazy. So that's, uh, that's what's happening in, in, in Tanzania, where they're not sharing uh, agents. And this is not just in Tanzania because they're small oper mobile operators. This is what happened in, 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 in M-Pesa, and there's my second Kenya reference. You know, literally weeks after Zap launched in Kenya, and okay, Kenya has the advantage that because of the market share of M-Pesa, they extract exclusivity from the merchant, so you don't see that, but you see this, husband and wife. You know, the, you know I, I haven't researched exactly what's going on here, but I'd be very curious to know uh, what is exactly the relationship between these two people. So you are sharing agents, you will share agents, do it in a deliberate way that minimizes cost to you, uh, uh, maximizes the consistency of the customer experience. That that you're seeing there is the worst thing, can, in my view, it's the worst thing that can happen to mobile money, where you're not com communicating trust, you're not communicating any consistency in the customer experience, because the customers think they're dealing with a store. That's what you don't want. You want them to think they're dealing with the mobile operators or the banks that are behind it. So let's go back to the circle. What does interoperability mean? There's many uh, different definitions. So let me take it entirely from the customer point of view, which is this, this communities of customers that you're trying to patch together. In the first instance, it means allowing any to any transfers, just these things talking to each other. Um, just being able, my customer sent to yours, so that my customer now doesn't have a reason to, get, to grab my competitor's SIM card. It's all self-interest here. Second thing, a shared cash, net, uh, a, a shared cash in, cash out network. Remember, this is not what the long term is. This is a necessary evil in the short term. In the long term, everything's going to be electronic. It will be. We're starting to see that in Kenya where more and more cash is being displaced. You'll, but you'll only displace cash if you can assume that every member of your family, every friend of yours, every business partner of yours is on the electronic uh, uh, platform. If only 10% of my community is on an electronic platform, signing up is adding complexity because it's not solving any of my problems. Now I have to learn one more, one more new thing. No value for me. So sharing the cash network, which means taking advantage of that any-to-any -any transfer, so that, that that store needs only one wallet, serving everyone else. But then here you need to add a few business rules, like what is the branding uh, uh, for all these stores that we're sharing? Is it one, we move to one logo that we all make up that says mobile money accepted here? Is it the four logos all by themselves, uh, uh, equal sized and all very calculated? Or is it like ATMs do, which is ATM of bank X and there's a little visa sign that says, hey, I take money from anybody who has this logo that's connected to this platform. 
all these other things that need to be sorted out, it's, 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 it's not hard. Third, which really to me seems like a no-brainer, if you're trying to create a new electronic payment platform, make it easy for all these people who are driving transactions to you, the billers, the employers, the banks, the microcredit institutions. If I'm an employer, do I really want to connect with four different uh, mobile money platforms? Why don't you guys work together so I send one single spreadsheet, phone number, amount, and you guys sort out which, which wallets, who owns what, what wallet, and you guys sort it out. Single biller interfaces, single uh, 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 salary disbursement interfaces. And then, of course, on that model, which is where the future is, um, what is the cash merchant, uh, act, uh, sorry, the, uh, the merchant acquisition framework that you're going to work with? So, so you don't have these multiple devices um, uh, and, uh, that, that, that uh, frankly stores are, are just going to have no interest in. This is the world that you guys will inhabit it. It's only a matter of time. And I think the more you delay, the, hard, the more you will have burnt that war chest of marketing dollars and agent acquisition dollars and, and, and all that hard, hard work that has been described today. So my question to you is, how do we make this possible? I, I know that in, in the, when you're first launching, it's hard enough aligning everybody in your company. And now this guy, you know, easy for him to say from the Gates Foundation, he says, not only do I need to interface with all the, uh, in, in, my internal uh, clients and, and business partners inside my company, and now I also have to corral my competitors. So my question to you is, how do we make this easy? What is, who is the party in your countries? Who is the party in India? Who is the party in Pakistan? Who is the party in Tanzania that can be the neutral uh, 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 convener of this so that we find what is the, r the rational way forward. Don't take it up upon yourselves as mobile money managers, but who is it that can find the right solution for this? So we, we understand the business requirements, and then it's just a matter of finding, okay, so who can do, who can, who can fulfill this interoperability? I mean, is it Visa? I don't know. Is it PayPal? I don't know. Is it, is it someone else? I don't know. Um, is it Vodafone? I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, we'll figure it out, but the question is, who are we going to put in that room between the mobile money operators? And by the way, I would say this is not an issue just for mobile money. This is an issue for anyone who wants to take electronic payments down to the base of the pyramid. So this should not be a club of mobile operators. Do include the banks that really have a vocation to go there. They're just in the same, in the same game as you, and you're all trying to put everyone in the country on this platform, so include them. This is not a mobile operator game. There's an electronic payments that reaches into every community. So who is going to be putting that together? I mean, I would like to call on the GSMA to take up the role, uh, uh, call on the uh, CGAP, our, uh, our partners, ourselves, whoever, I don't know. Um, so that's my plea to you. So what I would like to crack in 2011 is not so that we all become happily interconnected, but what is the process, country by country, to figure out what's the best way to get into interconnection?